Hello guys, welcome back. Um, we're gonna be doing Cerebus tonight. So <clears throat> she's very uh a very interesting character. I will explain as I go why I say that uh, first things first, let's get into the ability tree. Um there are two main ability uh, two main paths, sorry, two main paths we want to go for right away. One on the left tree, one on the right tree. Uh left tree one is all the way down to the left with a balanced stillness. While in the flow stance, you are immune to snares and immobilizing effects. So let's actually go ahead and grab that right away. You get the two passives I'm talking about and your four abilities. You have to be, I think, a minimum of 16, if I'm not mistaken. So if, if I put all my abilities in, we should have one point left over. So we got uh, this balance stillness. Next, we're going to want to bounce over to mastery and go straight down again. All the way down to hand of Ithkun, which we're not going to equip. We just got to get it to get to the passive and ignorance weakness. You are immune to being interrupted while casting spells in the flow things. So we're going to be really important. Now. I will explain to you why in a second. After that, you want to go back over to protection. And get rings of Asandra. After that, then we're gonna go and get Sartar Shield. Then we're gonna bounce back over to Mastery. Get Atlock's Burst. Upgrade that right away. With the two remaining passives or remaining points, sorry. You're gonna wanna get. I I'm gonna have you guys get. Guardian, Guardian Spirit. I'm not going to get it. I don't need it, but get Guardian Spirit. And then also get Leap of Freedom. And then, after you level up the next time, you're going to want to upgrade your uh, rings. Alright. So, I was telling somebody, a buddy of mine, uh, about how the Cerebus and Virtuoso can have more than four abilities. Um, this is how. Uh, the uh, each ability, map ability, has three stances. So the Tharis Leap is basically the first stance is basically a fade step. The second stance or flow stance is like a sl uh, yeah, slide back, dealing electricity damage. And then the third slash fi a finishing stance, it jumps up into the air and leaps down onto an enemy, dealing damage when you leap and when you drop. Um, I will be uh, showing you all that in a second. Um, so you can combo a lot of different stuff here, too. Alright, uh, let's go on to weapons. I would highly recommend running Heart of Pride. That, I mean, if you guys have it, Heart of Pride will give you, uh, 48 willpower for you guys, and a 50% attack speed, and a 50% uh, bonus resistance to electricity, on top of perma shocking any enemy that are nearby you and what happens when an enemy is shocked they take more elemental damage so basically this staff will allow you to do a heck of a lot more damage if you don't have the heart of pride the next best staff or the next best staff would be the staff of the dragon because that's what it comes with heal on kill crit chance 41 percent attack Again, if you don't have the Dragon Staff, but you have the Scepter of Rascal, I personally have used the Scepter of Rascal all the way up until I got my Hack on Staff. It's the second best staff in the game, personally, because of the 5% chance to cast Fade Cloak on a hit. On top of the 11% healing kill, which you can add more of with the Griffin and Blade. Um, Say so you don't have that one, uh, Yana Vonis is a good one because it gives you Guard on hit, but it's a really, uh, really rare staff, you could say. Not many people have it. Um, Kingfisher is another good one to uh, cast uh, Pull of the Abyss on hit, 11% uh, heal on kill, you can add more on top of it. So there's a lot of good staffs that come with heal on kill, like see this Kingfisher, I added up to 28%, which is actually another 17%. Um, rings, uh, because you're running Heart of Pride, you won't have any heal on kill, but you can try to run Life Drain rings. Um, speaking of which, after I show you the rest of the inventory here, or gear-wise, sorry, I will be going back to the abilities. I forgot to explain something to you guys. 
So definitely life drain rings if possible, since you're probably just put on instead of looking at. Um, belts, again, only belt that I wear is stagger belt. Um, you guys, if you have the health belt, whether it's a uh, what is it, gray, blue, or purple, just run the uh, belt of health until you get a lot more constitution, which I'd say about 100 constitutions when I stopped wearing my health belt. Um, I'm going to take off my amulet of immunity and put on the aggression one just so I can show you guys how to play when you guys are getting knocked down and stuff. Alright, back to the abilities. Uh, where is there's a passive I want to explain to you guys. Right here, from knowledge strength, whenever an enemy dies near you, your maximum health is increased. So you get 10 health per enemy dead, or that dies nearby you, whether you kill it or not. So basically what that means is, you can have an extra 500 health per round, just by having the passive. Comes in, it really comes in handy for you guys this uh, level, because 500 health for you guys is a lot, that's 100 hundred uh, constitution promotions right there because each constitution is five health. Um what else? Is there any other uh this is not really a too big of a deal unless you have a fire staff because mainly with the Cerebus I use mainly the fire abilities and you'll see here in a second. Um you draw upon staff's elemental charge, you deal more damage with that same element. So for me, I got a lightning staff, so all my lightning abilities, which is really only one, and it's the back side of the uh, Sarvan's loop. Alright, uh, let's get in here. All oh, the uh, potions again, I mainly just run Tears of the Dead. Uh, but what I re actually what I would recommend is Regeneration, Healing Mist, and uh, Rock Army. If possible, those three. You have two heals and you have a um, rock armor, which will give you a plus 200 armor for uh, 30 seconds. That basically counters the um, uh, bolters. And say you need to pick up somebody that's down, or you need to pick up uh, the supplies or whatever, you can just go ahead and pop it. You don't have to worry about archers or anything. Only thing you have to worry about would be mages or any magical attacks, poison, fire, anything elemental like that. Oop, wrong button. Yeah, I just love when I mess up on that. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> uh, the joys of having a second monitor and clicking off on the right side of it, it kicks off the council companions. And just to fair warn you guys, you will hear staticky. Uh, that's the uh, heart of pride. It's nothing wrong with your mic or your audio or whatever. I thought the same thing when uh, I first heard the, what you call it, the heart of pride. You can, you can, I'll stop talking here in a second, but you'll be able to hear the staticky, staticiness of it. Alright, so this is what I was talking about before with the different stages. Uh, let me grab this, and I will show you. Alright, so you got the first stage, second stage, and then the third stage. That's just one ability. So that's three abilities right there. And you got this ability, one, two, and then three. That's, what, six. And you got one, two, and then three. One, two, and then three. So that's 12 abilities in one character. And the best part, she has no mana, so you can just spam all of her abilities at once. So basically, the combo I like to do with her is... Let me deal with this guy. Um, is a uh, burst, ring, barrier... Ring, ring, barrier. That first ring I put down gives you, uh, what is it? Uh, 
I can look after after this, uh, but I should have looked before. Uh, it gives you damage re re reduction or damage resistance to anybody inside the uh, circle. Now the upgrade version of the ring just allows it so where when, when you go into the ring, I think for eight seconds after you still have the uh, speed bonus. Where are you now? So right there, I was in the third stage, and this guy, uh, the, oop, the, um, Genlock Alpha here wasn't able to knock me down because I was in my flow or finishing stance. And then when you're in your second stance, which is a flow, you won't be interrupted, which is different than being knocked down. Interrupted is like, uh, rage demons or terrors. Basically, there's two two kind of ways to play the service. You can play the way I play, which is half DPS, half uh, support with the barrier. Or you can just play all barrier or all DPS. I recommend the mixed build, because especially if you're playing solo like I usually do. It comes in handy. You want to play her as if she was a melee character, so let them come to you. And of course I get dark spawn, the ones that don't like to funnel. So right there, I was in the flow or finishing stance, so I wasn't able to get knocked over. Well, I'm at it since I'm doing a mage uh, tutorial. I will show you guys a little bit of a secret that a lot of the pros uh, know about. Um, that's how to cancel your attack to do more damage. So, this is going to be like a basic attack right here, right? Now, this is going to be a canceled one. Oh, well, okay, that was technically canceled. <laughs> Let me uh, finish it around and I'll show you guys. Let me aggro these guys. Now when you freeze them, let them shatter, you'll get more XP. Because it, it counts as a cross-class combo, even though it's you doing it yourself. Now, the Asara of Sleep uh, can also be used if you get knocked down. I'm not sure if you've noticed that a couple times when I was using it. You also got to be careful with the Heart of Pride because it is so fast that you end up overshooting a lot of uh, stuff. Yeah, we're going to space protect these guys. These ones are just a pain. Sometimes you just gotta bring them in and free them. Really not much else you can do against them. Normally you can just do a couple uh, bursts around them. So now I'll show you the, let me get in, okay, nope, they want to keep spawning. So I don't bother using the third stage right here. It's even with my 
promotions, it's only doing 400 damage, which is not a lot. So I don't even bother using it. The only time you see me doing it is it on accident if I'm spamming X. Alright, let me come in here and I will show you guys how to do the cancellation I was talking about. So, this is a normal basic attack with the mage. Now, I'm, now with the cancellation, when you slam your staff down, you want to click in your left analog stick to cancel the animation. Which will allow you to go back and attack faster, in a way. But, the the con to that is, unless you have an elite controller, you're gonna most likely break your controller. I've broken about two controllers because, I don't know, just the way that you click it in or whatever, it like messes with the controller's wiring or some, something like that. Eventually, if you do it long enough, you'll get uh, stick drift on, on that left controller, or left analog stick. So I would not recommend doing it unless you have an elite controller where you can map underneath the left analog stick. That's what I do. Um, but it's very beneficial. You can do it with everybody except for um, uh, uh, bow and arrows. You can do it with dual daggers. It's just not beneficial. Because in reality, you're actually slowing down your attack speed when you do it with the double daggers. I wrote these guys. Now, if you're ever on this uh, zone, the archers, if they don't, if they keep shooting at that wall where the emissary is at, if you come back to the statue here, usually they will funnel. Usually, I say, because, well, the Stark Spawn, they have a mind of their own. Right there, I didn't get knocked down because I was in the finishing stamps. So what the second shoot, what the second barrier does here, I'll show you. Is it's kind of like Mind Blast. As many enemies that are nearby you get kind of pushed back and you get barrier for it. I don't really use it unless it's like an accident. Like that's about it. You guys might find it useful. Also, you might find upgrading the barrier useful as well because they say that it's less likely for them to hit you. I don't notice a difference, or I never did, so I just never bothered upgrading it. You can also alternate a little bit too, kind of like I'm doing bear, uh, burst, ring, barrier, ring, ring, burst, like, just alternate a little bit. You don't always have to do the same combo. I just like doing the burst, uh, because it does a lot of damage. There's sometimes where I'll just sit here, just ring, ring, barrier for a while, letting it groups of enemies, like right now, and then, oop, I messed up, see? <laughs> and then now I'll... I'll burst, freeze them all, and shatter them. Up. That's what I was show or telling you before is when you when you leap, it it does damage on the target right there, and then as you come down, so it doubles. If you're right on top of them, it does double damage. Another good way to get around is you can also jump to pots as well. Um, sometimes uh, in the next couple zones, if the enemies are stuck up in a tower or behind where you can't reach them, you can lock onto them with your uh, uh, right analog stick and you sometimes can jump up into their spawn and destroy them that way. Rogue warrior door. You can see the door. Oop. Well, hi there. You can see the doors from right here, so you have to really go down there to look, just as a rogue and warrior. The main reason I know it's warrior is obviously there's no glow, no purple or gold glow.
Okay, I should have backed up right into him. Again, just like I said in the Archer video. Oh, okay. Well, not showing there. Uh, if it lets me, I'll show you guys again. Remember, constantly keep doing barrier for you guys. Because one, you get support XP, and two, you guys will be staying alive. Ooh, excuse me, more. The barrier goes on to all your teammates across, no matter where you are. So if I'm all the way back at the start, and just sitting there doing barrier all the time, the people up here will still get barrier. Alright, so will you show me... Oops, oh, I forgot the emissary, I forgot. Let me take a... Okay, or she'll just go over there. I forget to do barrier a lot because I don't use it as much as I should, but it, it comes in handy. Well, that failed. That's a good way to move as well as you do your power slide for your Asara's Leap front. Oop. Okay. Hopefully not get knocked down. There we go. Um, you do first one, and then you turn around while you're doing it and do the second one, and then it will push you forward. Yeah, be careful with the Heart of Pride, because like I do a lot, you'll end up spamming the X three times instead of twice on accident, and you'll put down the flames that are useless. So, let's see. Right now I'm doing about 1,200 to these 600 there, but when they come near me and get shocked, I... I start doing 800 to 1500. That's where the shock, uh, the perma shock comes into play. Another reason why I say let them uh, get close and play like your melee character with the Cerebus. See, like, let's see, that one I hit for 600, let it get close, get shocked. 700 to 800. Also doing your little uh, energy barrage at the end of your basic attacks also shocks the enemies as well, so you can shock them from afar as well to do more damage. Alright, so here I'm going to explain to you guys something. My buddy doesn't understand how I do this. I can show you what door it is just by looking up like right about there. It's a mage door. I'm going to kind of try and show you guys here with the mouse. Um, if you... Oh, why is my mouse... Come on. Why is my... Okay, nope. Damn it. One sec, guys. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Alright, so right over here. If you stand here, you can see right up there. If you kind of can see through it, it's a mage door. Uh, you can also... Oh, okay. Hold on. This guy wants to play. So now you can also do it from this side here same thing kind of the same right there so that's how i do it devil in case you were wondering i tried to explain it to him a couple times so he couldn't understand it maybe he just doesn't see it but so as soon as you guys open the door you guys should be able to see what door it is up there now the earth shakers if you guys don't know the only element they're not resistant to is lightning they're resistant to ice and cold. Um, I believe they're not resistant to spirit, so basically technically spirit, poison, um, and lightning would be the three that they're, they'd take full damage on.
try not to trigger the supplies until you're basically done with the round. Um, another good thing you guys can do is bait the uh, bolters back down to the, um, what you call it, which looks like they're coming. Bait them back down to the start. It takes a little bit longer, but if you stay right here, kind of off the wall, because if you're on the wall, let's see if I can show you. They should be able to shoot you through the wall. Let's see. You guys going to shoot me through the wall or no? Don't look like they're going to, but over uh, up in the, uh, by the guardian door, and also kind of off to the right of the guardian door, people like to sit on that wall and they forget that they can, either they forget or they don't know that you can uh, get shot through the wall. But this is a good spot, kind of right here in this crevice. It will basically get both entry entrances. You can pull them in if you want to, then freeze them. Freeze them before they even get to you. Really great crowd control. She is. She's amazing because she has no, no cooldowns. She can just literally sit here spamming all day. I don't think anybody else is going to be... Oh, here's one. The first stage of the barrier gives you the barrier to yourself. Not really useful unless you're the one doing the barriers, or unless you're by yourself like I am. You can kind of also look this way right here to see if they're coming or not. Instead of kind of putting yourself out into the open. It's a slow grind with dark spawn, but not much you can do. The only other thing you can do is go out there, but if you're kind of don't have the promotions, you will probably get your ass handed to you, not gonna lie. I am not gonna lie, I sometimes get my ass handed to me when I'm playing a level 1 uh, against boulders. That's why I bring my, my rock armor. Like actually here, I'll show you guys. Ooh. So let me get my barrier depleted, All right, how much do these guys hit me for? About 28 to 30 per per hit, right? Let me get my health full. Jesus, see, look at that. I had nobody's even died on on in the game, and I'm taking that much damage. So we're gonna go ahead and activate this now. See, now they're hitting me for once. They can't hurt me. I can literally run up here and grab the supplies, and they can't touch me. Then it wears off. So it's only time based. Um, another good spot with the Cerebus. If you guys can make it up here. I think I've said this before in my beginner's guide. I'm not 100% sure. But right here. Because the bolters get forced to come face to face with you. I do apologize about how long this video is going to be. Usually when I make these guys. I'm going to do a full run. So I can show you guys how to how to play them. I could do a small map, but I prefer the dragon maps because you get more XP out of them. I don't like the small maps because when you play them as a level 1, you go to like level 1 to 9. Which, 
isn't bad for you guys, but for me, I play a lot of Perilous and go straight to Nightmare, so if I only have 9 abilities or 8 abilities, I struggle in Nightmare, I'm not gonna lie. Um, so that's why I like doing Dragon Maps, because I go 1 to 12, usually 1 to 11 if I don't have any support XP. But, but yeah, see the Bolters literally have to come right up to me. So it might be beneficial for you guys to come here, it might not be, it depends on, uh, what you call it, the constitution level and how you feel comfortable wise, if you're in a group of three, two, four, who knows. Also, another thing to note, um, your barrier is as strong or is a little bit weaker than your health pool. So if your health pool is like, say, 2,000, I don't know the exact ratio, but it's definitely a lot weaker than your, your health pool. So keep that in mind. Also, same thing with your guard on your warriors or rogues. Just because you have, say, a full full thing of guard doesn't mean you can't get it taken off in one hit. I've uh, seen so many people, talk to so many people in parties while playing, and they have full guard or full barrier, and they get hit once, and it just gets obliterated. And they're like, how? Oh, I had full barrier, full guard. I'm just like, what's your constitution level? And they tell me, like, say, 10 or 12 or whatever, right? I was like, well, that's why, one, you're playing on Perilous, which is really out of your out of your league, because they're playing with me. And two, they're hitting you for so much. I'd say Cerebus would be one of my favorite uh, mages to play. Uh, she's very solo but team oriented. She's like, as, a, as you see, I can do everything by myself here. But it's also team oriented because you can keep everybody alive. You're basically a healer, even though there's no healers in Dragon Age. All right, you know what? I'm going to go down there and just obliterate everybody. This is taking too long. As I get basically obliterated. Now the good spot is inside the uh, guardian door. There's a good spot to sit. So make sure if you're ever opening these doors that you're in the flow or finishing stance. Because the door can get glitched if you get hit by an archer, a rogue, uh, anything to stagger you basically. That's why sometimes when you press A and you go ahead and you try to open it again, it, you just start jumping. Because the game registers it as open since you pressed A on it. If that makes sense. This wall here, see they can shoot me through the wall if I'm hugging the wall. Uh, this wall over here, they can shoot you through. And then the wall off to my left over there, I'll show you on the way out. This wall over here. Is there any gold? No gold. Yeah, if you hug it like this. They, they can shoot me through the wall. So, just what I tell people is just kind of stay off it a little bit. For the Earthshakers, just basically basic attack them while keeping your barrier up. Or if you have teammates, have them just take care of it and you just focus on barrier. Your main thing is if you're playing in a squad with people, your main objective is to keep that barrier up. It will help you guys dramatically, it will save you guys a lot, and it will just make it smooth, make the round smoother. I don't know how many times uh, playing on Nightmare. If we didn't have a Cerebus, we would have fucking, we would have wiped. Just the added protection comes in handy. Also, the support XP is phenomenal. Alright, I'll show you guys this to see if I can get it. There we go, see? You can come up here. 
sometimes if like I've had Red Templar Knight stay in the back here charging something up like right here and you couldn't you couldn't hit it from down there so I had to like get an angle on it somehow and jump up there. Or uh, sometimes you'll have like say it's a rogue door and you just playing by yourself and there's like an assassin behind the door. I've had that happen too so you just come over here you can either do your first burst or you pull them through the wall and you just kill them that way. She comes in handy to fix some of the bugs that Bioware and EA haven't fixed because the game's so old. And the usual dark spawn never stopping spawning. Guess the irony in their name. Alright. Ooh, we're going on, what, 36 minutes? This is, I guess it took about 10 minutes to explain, uh, what you call it, the build, I believe. Her backslide can destroy this. I like that part. Uh, sprinting and jumping like this, even if you're not lagging, is one of the fastest ways to, to run. You can either stay here or off to the side here to make the archers kind of funnel. But be careful because see how they're pushing me. <laughs> uh, since you're playing Cerebus, I would try to save the Emissary Alpha for last unless you are getting beamed by it. Um, if you have heal on kill, then try to take it out first, then use, like, the other guys to, uh, or, like, the regular soldiers to, um, uh, heal yourself as you take damage. Another good spot is over here. Won't be able to get that one on the left there, but the other ones will. And just come up here. Oop, okay. Come up here. Freeze everybody, except for the brutes. I'm getting my ass knocked around. Feel like a ping pong ball right now. Right, I'm just going to go ahead and take care of the Emissary Alpha real quick. I forgot I've got my hack on on, so I'm not doing as much damage as I normally would be. You can insta-kill her. Um, normally she explodes like that, but if you kill her while she's doing her beam attack, you don't. she won't explode. There we go, that's what I wanted. Well, that's how I play the service. I didn't expect it to be flipping, going on 40 minutes now. So I do apologize about that, my guys and gals, whoever's watching this. Um, we'll go ahead and put the last couple points in here and ahead and see what we have for, um, 
I can't talk right now. Basically, put the last points in and tell you where to put the last uh, couple points, like one. I think we're going to get to 18 here, 17. If I get to 19, I'll be lucky, but I should get to 18. 18, and almost, oh, I did get to 19. And see, that's the support XP right there. So, since you're playing, since usually you don't uh, play a level 20, so I'll show you what the last two points are. Would go. Uh, obviously, you got the Guardian Spirit. I don't have it. Uh, I grabbed it instead. So get Rings of Asandra upgrade. Um, this is what the upgrade for uh, uh, Sartar Shield does. Forming a barrier while in the flow stance now knocks down enemies and makes them less likely to target you again. If you're playing by yourself, obviously you're not gonna be able to get that because they're gonna hit you either way. Up to you if you want to get it or not. I don't. I don't get it. Um, you can get with strength and endurance uh, while you're casting uh, spells. You take twenty percent less damage, which might come in handy for you guys. Uh, Power of the Dead is a good one. More damage. Um, you can get from Power Mastery. Every time you kill an enemy, four hundred percent weapon damage. It explodes. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, uh, passives that you can get on the service. Uh, let's see, like, uh, Guard Smasher, and uh, what it is, is not basically 100% damage versus Guard, 100% or bonus damage versus Guard and Barrier. I'm gonna go ahead and get my Explosion Damage, I like that, because I can hurt a lot more people that way, and that way. Um, what, it's totally up to you if you want to get, <clears throat> excuse me, the two I just got, the Barrier Guard Damage Bonus, or the Damage Reduction here. And then you can get the duration increased by 25%, up to you. Really, the last couple points are all personal preference. There's really no set ones you want to get other than your four abilities and maybe your upgrades. So I hope that helps you guys. I will talk to you guys in the next video. Enjoy the rest of your day.